Have you ever considered how much digestive juices your stomach produces every day? If I told you it was <gasps> two to three liters, would you believe me? That's quite a lot, isn't it? These juices contain a potent and powerful cocktail of specialized biochemicals which help the body break down and digest food. They contain lots of hydrochloric acid, which is used to kill pesky foreign microorganisms and creates a cozy, battery acid-like internal environment, which happens to be perfectly suited to the specialized meat-eating enzymes which work to break down food into smaller molecules that can be absorbed in the intestines. But where does all this gastric juice come from? Well, today we're going to find out. Let's have a look at the cells and tissues that make up the wall of the stomach. It's time to explore the histology of the stomach. In this tutorial, we'll be putting the stomach wall under the microscope and find out everything you need to know about the histology of this important digestive organ. We're going to begin our tutorial today by first reminding ourselves about the gross anatomy of the stomach, specifically its different regions and parts. We're then going to look at the typical microanatomy of the different layers which comprise the wall of the stomach and learn about where exactly all our gastric juices are produced. After that, we'll be looking at some regional differences in the histology of the stomach before finally wrapping it all up with some clinical notes for this topic. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry to know more. So let's get started and begin by first reminding ourselves of the gross anatomy of the stomach. So, we know that the stomach is effectively a distended pouch of the gastrointestinal tract, which is located distal to the esophagus and proximal to the duodenum of the small intestine. The actual stomach itself can be divided into four parts. The cardia is located here around the esophagogastric junction and is defined by the presence of specialized cardiac glands, which we'll learn more about in just a few moments, this next area is called the fundus. It's the area above the esophageal opening and makes up the upper curvature, which is in contact with the diaphragm. The largest division of the stomach is the corpus, meaning the body of the stomach. This, of course, is where most of the mixing and churning occurs. And finally, we have the pylorus, which is composed of two parts, the pyloric antrum, which is followed by the narrower pyloric canal. It terminates here at the pyloric sphincter, which opens to move food into the duodenum. It's important for us to know the different parts of the stomach, as we'll soon see that each region varies histologically. Of course, in anatomy, we always have to keep in mind that form follows function, so let's just take a second to remind ourselves of the specific roles of the stomach in the digestive process. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.